Okay, hello everyone. Uh, good day. I hope that the recording right now will not go into waste anymore for the third time. So before we start, now let's have just a brief uh, review of what we have discussed so far last meeting. No, pag-usapan natin siya. Uh, daanan natin ang konte. Last meeting we have or we have seen these pictures and I ask you, what can you deduce from the illustrations that I have uh, shared with you? you know? um, also this here, and this transition on our technology, the same or likewise on the changes that happen on our planet. So we have also this. And then we also give this um, illustrations. And that when I ask what were you, or what can you deduce or what you can get from the pictures, the prominent answers were number one, it shows change, and number two, there is time involvement. So that simple motivation process now will lead us to the talk of the changes through time, na pag-usapan, which merely will tell you on evolution and evolutionary. Okay. We have talked about uh, last time, what's the definition of evolution? And a lot of you have mentioned it's a systematic process of change through time, which is in accordance with most of the dictionaries that you can find on the website or even on your uh, book binded or your hard copies of your dictionary. And as you can see here on this three a prominent dictionary, um, you can look in here that for them, evolution is change and there's still time involvement per generation and that it is a process, which solidly, no, kung titignan natin, this will solidly tell you or tell everyone na your definition of evolution as a process of change through time or per generation is correct. However, last meeting, I already showed you or presented to you some of the definitions coming from different researchers in the past and some scientists on how do they take or what's their viewpoint with regards to evolution. And the first one is with Douglas Futoyma, that according to him, evolution, what we could deduce from from this long definition of binigay niya is that evolution embraces even the slight change or kahit kaunting change lang at the molecular level. So here, I, I emphasized before that this change could happen when there is now the process of our central dogma. Naalala ninyo, no? We talk about how DNA changed into our RNA or transcripted to RNA and then translated to your protein by the translation process. In that, I emphasize that the four nucleotides or five nucleotides present on our um, nucleic acids could the, the simple deletion or the simple addition of these nucleotides could already cause mutation on the entire DNA template. Na kapag nasingitan siya ng isang nucleotide, the reading during the duplication process of our DNA and the transcription ng DNA papunta or magiging RNA template via the aid of our mRNA, kung atin ang tawag na messenger RNA, could already no cause mutation. Isa lang yan, isang mawala, isang madagdag, mag-shift mag ng reading frame, it will cause now for a mutation or changes in your RNA template, which consequently will cause different translation of protein template natin. Kasi pag nagbago yun, technically lahat yan, there's a cascading effect papunta sa transcription and translation. Now, 
Sometimes it's just not on the DNA template. Minsan yung mga alleles natin o yung mga chromosomes natin mismo, nagkakaroon tayo yung tinatawag natin ng genetic aberrations because there are uh, chances or circumstances na yung chromosome natin at the metaphase, imbis that they will separate against each other during anaphase and telophase, they will separate papunta sa pose. What happens is that nagkakaroon ng problem in that nakukuha o hindi humihiwalay ang chromosome but sumasama siya papunta sa isang pole lamang. Now, causing that the daughter cell, one daughter cell, will have more chromosomes and the other daughter cell will have less chromosome. Dito na pumapasok yung ating mga genetic aberrations like the trisomy 21 or ang Down syndrome natin that is wrongly term as mongoloidism. That's wrong. It's Down syndrome. We have Kleifender syndrome. We have Edward syndrome. We have Jacobs syndrome. And then we have also what you call as the Pato syndrome. Sa Pato syndrome, instead na 2X ang, na, ang, ang gender ng babae, ano nangyayari? Yung isang um, gen, uh, X chromosome niya nawawala. Why? Because dumagdag o sumamang nga sa isang daughter cell. Leaving you now to have what you call as the Pato syndrome and that of the Kleinfelter, Kleinfelter's syndrome. So, anong nangyari dito? Nagkakaroon tayo ng superwoman kasi ang kanya ay XXY chromosome na sa isang babae, X0 chromosome, which is the Pato syndrome. Maraming pwedeng mangyari. So, according to Douglas Fatoyma, Evolution does not only entail changes in the alleles, but also changes on, kahit slight change lang siya, at the molecular level or molecular template, this will cause already evolution. Then, um, last meeting, we also shared Van Valen's take, of, take on the definition of evolution. And according to Leigh Van Valen, evolution, there is the control of development by ecology. That is, no, there is the importance of the environmental, uh, the, the, the environment, the environmental stimulus or stimuli as to which the organism is uh, always or it, it is, um, what do you call this, constantly um, affected or constantly prone, no? lagi silang naka, ano, napuprone sa mga stimulus or different stimulus in the environment. Hence, no, uh, environment could cause that the organism to adapt to this. Prolonged change in the environment will initiate no, the organisms to have prolonged adaptation. You do remember in your ecology, we have what you call as tolerances. That according to Shelford's law of tolerance, that organisms has a range of tolerance. Hindi naman agad-agad on the abrupt or yung gradual change in the environment, automatic hindi makakapag-survive ang organism. Organisms' main goal is to survive and adapt and reproduce. No? Survive and reproduce. Now, if there is a prolonged change in the environment, your organisms now will have range of tolerances. This range of tolerances will allow them to make mechanisms to adapt to the changes on the environment. And this adaptation of your organisms could get embedded on their genetic template. May mga instances na since prolonged yung change in the environment, na pro-prolong din yung adaptation ng organism. It's a 50-50 chance. Hindi naman ibig sabihin that because of prolonged adaptation or mechanism embedded against sa genes, there are circumstances na hindi siya na embed but there are some circumstances na it is genetically embedded. So, for those adaptation that gets genetically embedded, dahil sa change in the environmental stimulus, nagkakaroon ka ngayon ng mutation, nagkakaroon ka ngayon ng variation sa genes that could be um, passed from generation to the next generations. No? 
That is, ito yung sinasabi ni Van Dale. Si Fotoyma kasi, even on the molecular level, na mag-change lang yan, it could cause a mutation and concurrently could cause evolution. Likewise, no, the environment as to which the organism can be seen um, could also affect the nature of of your organism and because of that they could change and yung change na yun could cause evolutionary change to your organism last minute we also talk about another definition coming from endler according to endler no ang pinaka dapat nating tandaan dito is that biological evolution is any directional change or communicative change he emphasizes descent with modification. Kaya nga, last meeting, if we could summarize, collapse, par paraphrase, and combine the ideas of these three um, evolutionary scientists, we could come up with one basic definition. And that is, your biological evolution is any net directional change in a population up to molecular level as affected by its environment and ecology. So, in other words, for have, ang haba kasi ma'am, ang haba naman. So, basically, evolution is just descent with modification. Because when you say descent, there is now you are regarding, no? you are talking about the inheritance per organism or per different generations. And there is a term modification which encompasses both small scale or even large scale changes on your organism as caused, no? as caused by the environmental interaction or environment stimulus. Ngayon, you have to tell in here or you have to just understand your modification is not just one modification but it's a cumulative change it's one a net directional change hence no for biological evolution we can simply define it as descent with modification because this will encompass micro evolution or the changes in the genes or alleles or the frequency in a population from one generation to the next that's micro evolution or it could encompass a large scale evolution which talks about the one entire clade of your phylogenetic tree this is now getting the entire phylum of organism or entire kingdom of your organism or the entire domain of your organism that's macro evolution no because um you have to understand that evolution will tell you how life has changed from the uh, creation of our ancestor how do we change how descendants how recent organisms like us change comparable with our ancestors. Ito yung sinasabi kasi ng definition na descent with modification. Kasi if we will be looking at only on the definition that evolution is just change, no? it is just a change in the um, to, characteristics, yung sinasabi natin, change in the characteristics of your organism or it's a process of change through time uh, we have presented this for illustration last meeting lahat ng to all of this this picture a b c and d all of this will tell you change through time here as you can see no the seasonal change here of the leaves of your plants especially on your um, dito, sa bandang, on, on the biome natin sa temperate zone, no? ang mangyayari to like in Canada, you know for a fact that plants there have seasonal changes. During spring, very lush green ang mga plants or leaves ng ating mga trees. However, after three to six months, come the season of autumn or fall, there is now change 
in the uh, biology, biology or there's no change on the characteristics of the plants that you can find on temperate biome. That is, yung kanilang leaves will turn into orange, yellow, um, red, um, pertaining for a sense event or nagkakaroon ka na necrosis na mamatay yung mga leaves, they're shedding of their leaves in preparation for hibernation come winter season. Pero kung titingnan nyo itong dalawang to, there is no change over there. There is no time also in there. And it's a process, diba? May physiological process involved. But all of you disagreed saying or all of you did not no, consider that this um, illustration of A or the seasonal change of your plants is evolution. Pero kasi it satisfies the definition of evolution as process of change through time. Sabi nyo, no, that is not change. So, hindi ito, uh, that, uh, that is not evolution. I also presented this to you on the tectonic changes. Some of your tectonic plates or some of your ge geological features like mountains, like um, volcanoes, could change through time. There could be addition of new feature, but then there is now the um, destruction of the current feature of your tectonic plates. And when asked, is this evolution? You said no, but it satisfies the definition of change through time. Then I presented to you the third scenario. Here you can see that you have your Lola, your Lolo, your mommy, and your Tito. And then as you can see, per generation, first generation, second generation, and third generation, there is short term change on this population. If you will look at this as individual, you could say, amam, ah, hindi yan evolution. Kasi ang pinag-usapan si Lola ay si Lola ko lang at si Lolo ko. Yes, that's true because that's individual. But if you will be looking at this as this blue one represents a population of female or, or they represent the entire population, uh, see female part of the population and the male part of the population, then this could be, no, this could be um, taken as evolution. Yes, no, uh, yes, you can say that this is evolution. Bakit? There's still descent with modification. Nanjan pa rin ang modification on the genetic uh, code of your organisms. If you will be looking at eto ay representations. No? They are reps. No? Representation ng population. At hindi lang mere individual. If that's the case, then this is a sample of evolution. This is a sample of microevolution. Now, on the fourth one, this is, of course, this is talagang technically evolution na talaga. And this is on the micro level. Why? Because we're looking at one clade, isang area ng phylogenetic tree mo. What I gave an example last time is on the order insecta. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, class insecta pala, hindi order, no? Class insecta. In that, in one class, which is insecta, this could have different orders pa. You have the orders of Lepidopterans, o yung mating mga butterfly, Hemipterans, no? Uh, Hymenopterans, yung mga bees, butter, ano natin dyan. And then we have Coleopterans, yung ating mga beetles, and then we have the siphonopterans, o yung ating mga lies, yung mga kuto, and so on. All of them, if you will be looking at this organism, they have different characteristics. They have different wings, they have different uh, habit, they have different um, sources of food, they have different ways in obtaining food. And if you observe the physical attributes nila, it, Pag mo ang mga beetles mo, i-compare mo sa dragonfly mo, i-compare mo sa butterfly mo, you will be seeing at iba-iba sa, sa head pa lang nila. Iba na yung mouth part, iba na yung kanilang eyes, iba na yung mandibles nila, iba yung feature ng kanilang um, antenna, 
even no even doon sa legs ng mga insects uh, i'm i'm not sure if you're curious enough no but even the legs of your insects though they belong to one class insecta they have differences no there are changes or modifications in their features that is unique to each other some of the legs of your insects are for walking some are for jumping just like dun sa ating mga grasshopper some of the legs are for clutching some of the legs in here is for um crawling may mga iba't iba actually uh, i'm teaching entomology or the study of insects no um you can get fascinated na itong isang class lang na ito ng organisms already shows you variation already shows you diversity and already proves you there are changes that could happen along the way through time in the um one plate macro evolution ito no of course this does not happen na tomorrow i'll be a butterfly <laughs> no tomorrow i'll be hindi naman siya ganun it takes thousands of years it takes how many generations before you can have this type of diversity and here kitang kita yung tinatawag natin descent with modification okay kasi paano din masasabi that they do belong in one class or do they do belong in one group it's because they still have those similar features that could be attributed to the feature of their ancestor an example is that meron silang cephalization, meron silang regionalization. They contain three regions. They have the head, they have the thorax, and they have the um, abdomen. They have exoskeleton, they have six legs, and so on and so forth, which differentiate them from the arachnidase, which different, uh, differs them from crustaceans. But all of this no, belong to one group. So, dito pa lang makikita mo that these characteristics that they share no, might be because they came from or they descended from an ancestor. And no, since meron silang para-para or common characteristics, mapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapap
on our discussion nitong mga nauna, no? you can already observe na even the definition of evolution, there's a lot of misconceptions. There's already a, siguro, misconception or kulang <laughs> lack of conception no, in terms of the definition. Mas maganda siguro that you should be careful on streaming no, yung, yung pagkakat mo ng mga information sa evolution. Kasi a simple word uh, when you're talking about evolution could already cause confusion no, sa mga sa mga students. Say for example, wala namang sinabi si Charles Darwin on the origin of species. But most of of the origin of the species. Which is it's just a preposition on and off. One letter difference na N and F but it's already giving you a different meaning. It's already showing you a different flow of of ideas. No? So, dapat medyo ingat din tayo when we're talking about evolution. And this is also the main reason bakit ang daming takot sa evolution. Bakit parang hindi nila na-enjoy ang evolution? Because they thought na parang ang hirap intindihin ng evolution. So now, I hope clear sa inyo na yes, no, there's still change, there's a process, there is time involved in evolution, but you should be careful na mas magandang i-define siya as descent with modification so that it encompass or it can encompass any directional change on the organism up to the molecular level as affected by the environment. Okay, so change over time lang siya. Okay, so now let's have different um, misconception or let's correct some of the misconceptions in evolution. Number one, as review natin na karana, no? evolution is a theory about the origin of life. It's not a study on the origin of life. This is a misconception. Why? Because when we talk about the origin of life here, you are only pertaining here. I'm sorry. Bagoy natin ang kulay. Gusto ko ibang kulay. You are only pertaining on this portion. Ito. Kung saan ang start. This is your origin. And evolution. Ito lang ba ang evolution? This part only? No. Evolution, no? Yes, part ang origin of life. Part siya ng discussion on how evolution should view their, their understanding. But evolution is more than on the origin of species or life. It's more on how life changes. Itong evolution. How life changes after the conception of life. This is the bread and butter of your evolution. How does organism change why do they we have different kingdom different orders why are organisms having this unique traits having this common traits this is where evolution is no it do encompass or include origin of life as a part of theory but evolution is more than that it talks about how life had changed after the origin of our conception of the first organism. So, evolution is not just a theory on the origin of life. It's more on the theory on how life had been modified after the conception of life. Union. Another misconception, and which is usually misconception talaga siya, no, is that um, evolutionary theory implies that life evolves and continues to evolve randomly or by chance. Ito kasi is a product of ano yun, no? parang um, misunderstanding on the statement that tayong mga anak are better ang ating genetic makeup because yung uh, genetic makeup ni daddy at yung genetic makeup ni mami pinagsama so mas maganda ngayon technically yung 
DNA natin or yung, yung genes natin compared sa ating parents. So here, ang nangyayari ngayon is that you get to understand na, ah, okay, because of that chance na nakuha ko yung best kay daddy at best kay mommy, then I, I am a different organism or parang nag-evolve ka. Now, also, in this statement, you are only talking about random need or by chance. Yes, it's important naman. No? When you say random or by chance, you don't have control over it. Hindi mo siya sinabing, o oh, magbago ka. Hindi ganun. You don't have any control. It just happens. It's just parang hindi mo alam kung kikidlat dyan. Diba? Parang hindi mo ginusto. It does happen. Nangyari lang siya. That's by chance. So, there are, no, for example, yung pinag-usapan nga natin on the central dogma, there are circumstances na our genes mutate. Na hindi naman natin sinabi, oy, kamay, 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 yung genes dyan, mag magmutate ka, magmutate ka. <laughs> hindi ganun. It happens randomly. It happens by chance. We don't have control over it. And accordingly, yun daw yung nangyayari sa evolution. Of course, no, if there are random changes in the environment, random changes in the stimulus or stimuli presented to you, there is chances that you could mutate in response to that change. Pero yung, yung mutation mo is by chance. Hindi mo sinabi, oh, mag-mutate ka ng pang, ano, pang super ice age kasi bukas ice age na or baka mag ice age. No, it's not, that's not the case. It's random. You don't have control over it. You don't have bias over it. It just happens. Hindi mo sinabi na, ah, gusto ko lahat, ah, ang gusto ko na color ng eyes ko ay green. Or gusto ko yung anak kong susunod pag nanganak ako, gusto ko green yan. So, katawan, 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 mag-isip ko, mag-isip ko, by chance, by chance, hindi ganun. It does not happen in real life. Of course, ngayon, pwede mo sabihin na, ma'am, pwede ko na siyang kontrolin. Kasi, meron na tayong mga genetic manipulations. Um, that does not fall on randomness or by chance. It falls on the next category. So evolution is not just or does not only happen because of random chances happening in the environment. It's part of it, but it's not the entire story. Because no, we could also have non-random situations as to which could contribute to the evolution of an organism. Just like research, na kung meron kang random, meron kang non-random. In the non-random part of evolution, this is where preferences, when you say preferences, there is bias in your decision, you have control over your decision, and you have a choice here. Dito pumapasok na yung ikaw or the organisms now follow what they prefer. What do they prefer na characteristics? Ito, it is very prominent in the selection of mates of organism. Uh, what do you mean by selection of mates? No? You are aware naman, even on the animal, lalong lalo na in the animal kingdom, that organisms tend to select mates based on their criteria, based on what characteristics do they want to have as their mates. For example, ikaw, no? ikaw mismo. Kapag nanligaw ka, if you're a man, or ikaw na nanligaw sa asawa mo ngayon, or sa mate mo ngayon, or sa girlfriend mo ngayon, you chose them because you have certain criteria. And tayong mga babae, we also have our own criteria in selecting our preferred mate. Yung iba, o pagangnam style ang bet nila. Yung iba, they want Japanese na. Yung iba, mga mala Juan de la Cruz, or ang gusto nila is mga <laughs> what they 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 want are foreigner like yung what they um read on Wattpad, what they saw on the TV. It affects the preference. So ikaw dark and handsome ang bet ng mga um sinuunang babae ngayon ang bet na nila is tall, white, 
clean and singket, mga ganyan. So, you have preferences. And these preferences of you affects the gene or the genetics of your offspring, offspring, <laughs> offspring, filial daughters and filial sons mo in the future. Bakit? Bakit? Remember that each of us carries a, gene, a certain gene, no? Or set, uh, we, we contain genes. <laughs> genes that could be different with our meat. And then if there is now reciprocal, I don't know, and reproduction of your filials, ang mangyayari, some of the gene copies of your meat will be um, binded together with your genes. So, nagkakaroon nga ng genetic variation. And it, it will cause evolution on the children or on your filials. Now, meron tayong tinatawag kasi dito, no? That in the non-random selection of, of or preference of your mates, we have two types. Meron tayong tinatawag na I'm sorry. Assertative mating and disassertative mating. So, assertative mating, this is the preference for similar types or similar phenotypes. What do we mean? Sa assertative, Kung sino yung, kung, kung itong isang ito, ang gusto lang niyang i-love ay yung katulad niya. Genotypically pareho or katulad niya ng kulay. Black sa black, white sa white. And you know for a fact, no, for the longest time on the previous natin mga area, uh, during times that there is great racism na nangyayari, there is, no, groupings of people that a male black person could not marry a white female person or vice versa. There's um, exclusion on the groups. This is assertative meeting. Meron naman ngayon, as time goes by, you can see that there is this assertative meeting. There are circumstances or there are organisms that would like to have a mate that is different from them. Iba ang lahi sa kanila. And because of that, kung titingnan nyo, each of these organisms contain no, genetic alleles or contain alleles that could be, pwede natin i-combine, a recombinate, uh, magkaroon ng recombination, and this could, no, recombine, I'm sorry, walang recombinate. They could recombine, no, causing recombination. And therefore, mamaya, when, when you have your um, filials, they could have a heterogeneous um, result of of gene. So, magkakaroon din ng variation. Magkakaroon din ng mutation on the organism. But this is not by chance. This is simply because of the preference of the organism. You can also look at this way, no? In the animal kingdom, there's a lot of criteria on how uh, females chose their mates. For example, for the birds, merong mga courtship, yung the best dancer in a bird, or the best singing male in a bird, or the like those on the peahen and the peacocks, na very grandiose yung kanyang feather. The more colorful, yun ang mas gusto na mate ng mga female. Or the more, kung sino man ang nanalo sa fight to the death of these two males, doon, yun yung kung sino strongest, siya yung magiging mate nitong mga uh, female organism. Like in the pride of your lions, di ba? Hindi naman static or forever yung kanilang um, mate na lalaki. Nag-iisang lion natin sa pride ng mga lioness, no? There are times na they select, no, namimili sila ng kanilang mate who is able to uh, protect them, who is able to protect their territory. You can see that on several documentaries, no. There is also chances that the lioness themselves oust, no, pinapalayas talaga nila yung kanilang mate na lion because ano siya, hindi niya kayang i-protect yung pride. And that is preference, no? Pwede kasing i-prefer ng pride na ng lioness na yan, yung bagong nanalo na na lion natin. So, nagkakaroon ka rin ng variation doon kasi there's killing of the cubs, there's mating, immediate mating nila. So, nagkakaroon ng variation ngayon yung 
lineage per generation to the next generation to the next generation of your lion. So, meron ganun nangyayari. So, here, you have to understand that when we talk about evolution, it's not just by chance. This is a wrong concept. 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 Um, chance and randomness do really factor in evolution. But it's just half of the process. You have to understand that there should also be non-random selection here. So, kung titignan natin, the proper term is, or the proper statement is that evolution will imply that life has evolved and continues to evolve randomly and non-randomly. Randomly by chance or random caused by random mutations and caused by non-random selection. So hence, life evolved due to random mutations and non-random selection. Mas exclusive or mas, in, mas maganda ito ang term natin because it will now depict the whole picture on how evolution could occur. Random mutations and non-random selection. Okay. Now, third misconception. Ito, always ito misconception. Kasi nga, we thought that when you compare the ancestor versus the descendants, there's usually, no? kasi nga, yung ancestor nga, say for example, our ancestor is si mommy and si daddy. So, ang sabi sa genetics, you get half of your genes kay daddy and you get half of your genes kay mommy. So, when you combine these two, no? when you combine these two, there's now a, um, ang tawag mo dito, better daw ang yung variant. Kasi nakuha mo yung kalahati sa tatay, nakuha mo yung kalahati sa nanay, so better variant ka. Therefore, no, yung result is progression. There's progress in you, mas better ka through time. Well, in fact, no, evolution will say this is a wrong idea. Just because you have a different characteristic to your ancestor means, no, at ikaw ang product na ngayon, na ikaw ang descendant ang product na ngayon, means you are better than before. This is a wrong conception because evolution is not a stepwise process. Hindi siya Pag habang tumataas ka sa phylogenetic tree, mas better and better and better ka. No. Because you have to understand, in phylogenetic tree, we have this ancestor, there's modification that happened to us, and therefore, nagkakaroon tayo ng different characteristics. That is, no, these characteristics are in response to our environment. You also need to understand that evolution does not give you the better characteristics. Evolution will give you just enough characteristics for you to be able to adapt and survive to the environment. Kasi, if you will be looking at, we are better versions of, of your, uh, in the animal kingdom, or we are the best versions of carriers of these genes, then dapat you, you can have idea that upon the entry of COVID-19 sa atin, hindi tayo na-wipe out. Alam mo yun? This could not lead to pandemic. Why? Because best version ka eh. Best version ka ng genes. Meaning, if there are changes on the variants of viruses, you can withstand it. Pero you have seen for the last three years already, that our that the, the human no human groups are aren't able to survive the effects of this COVID-19 viruses. We're not even protected. Eh. Kaya nga hanggang ngayon nagpapa booster job pa tayo, no? Meron pa tayong boosters chan. We still up our immune system. Why? Because the genetic makeup that we have is not able to counter no new forms of viruses or new forms of infection and that is where here so dapat you have to understand what evolution is giving is not progress what evolution is giving is not a better ver version or the best version of organism but what evolution
giving is just enough, enough characteristics for us to survive. And that is now your evolution. No? Evolution does not result in problems. Seldom does this happen. Okay? And also, no, if you can see another example, of course, we know, sabi nga, the more varied our um, characteristics, the better that we could survive in the environment. Diba ito yung usapan nun? Or ito yung parang palaging ine-emphasize in genetics or in some uh, sub-disciplines. Kasi better version ka na ng danay at tatay mo. May mga ibang characteristics na, na lumulutang sa'yo. But however, in just one change in the environment, isang snap lang, nagbago ang mundo, nagbago ang environmental um, features. There could be cases that this new improved characteristics or variations of your organism could wipe them out. Just look at this, no? The presence of the yellow characteristics of your petals in here could mean progress, could mean a better version of this original natin na mga red petals. But because of one change, isang change lang sa environment, it could already cause an entire, no? an entire variant or entire part of the population to be wiped out. So, ang mangyayari dito, the surviving ones now will be the source of the um, population. And because of that, nawala yung iba, nagkaroon ka ngayon ng less variation. And the new population now na magpro-prosper ay yung mga may lesser na ang variation. So, you see in here, even ngayon, hindi nyo pinapakita ang progress eh. Pwede, no? The, again, ito yung sinasabi ko. Your, the, the evolution will just give you enough to survive in the environment. It will not give you the best or more for you to withstand the environment. Just enough for you to survive. Not totally for you to be able to be prolonged life. This is a misconception. So, ano pala mamantama? Results in progress, no? Evolution will give, no? enough characteristics for organism to thrive on their immediate environment, not the other way around. Okay? Another misconception, no? individual organisms can evolve during a single lifespan. Of course, kanina on the definition, we have already talked na hindi yung individual organisms. This is wrong, sabi natin. No? Mali ito. What does evolve is a population. But, no, ang gusto natin din i-emphasize, it's not on a single lifespan. Say, for example, no, may mga ganito kasing cases na alalan yung question nun na, why do we have long neck giraffe? Ang sagot ng iba, ah, because of the law of use and disuse. Na sinasabi na, itong mag-partner na to, sabi niya sa partner niya, stretch, Stretch mo yung leg mo. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Think about the children. Uh, you have to stretch your neck. No? Kaka-stretch niya ng neck to, uh, to achieve that tree. Doon nagkaroon tayo ngayon ng long neck giraffe. But in reality, this is a wrong concept. Because no, the correct theory is of that of Lamarck. According to Lamarck, uh, in, in uh, ancient time, no, we do have what you call a short neck giraffe, we have medium-sized neck giraffe, and we have the long neck giraffe. What happens? They, they, they thrive, the, this population of giraffes, thrive in a population na maraming vegetation. Yung mga short neck giraffe could feed on those uh, smaller bushes or short bushes of, of plants. The medium-sized and the long neck giraffes could, of course, the higher they get, the higher is their resources. So, during this time of the environment, the conducive pa, very lush pa, marami pang vegetation, they ha uh, live happily. But when the environment or the the not naman features, but ano ba to, but the events in the environment come in, nagbago environmental or our physical, chemical uh, factors changes, it affected to the point that the effect of the producers is that 
yung amount of short bushes natin, umuunti ng umuunti, namamatay yung mga maliliit na bushes. And the only thriving are those of the trees. For some reasons, there could be an environmental um, cause for that. Now, kung umuunti ang food resource ng mga short neck giraffe, of course, no, nagkakaroon tayo, syempre, bumababa ang food resource mo, uh, hindi mo naman naaabot ang, ang puno. So, what happens is that there will be massive competition between short neck giraffe. This competition involves competition on the food resource. So, kung kakaunti ang food resource mo, magkakaroon ng competition sa mga short neck. They will be the one fighting with each other which might cause or affect their reproduction. Pwede mamamatay ang mga female sa kanilang pag-aaway-aaway sa, sa, sa food resource or pwede no, the surviving short neck giraffes are too small in the population that ang nangyayari since matataas nga yung mga leaves natin so ang mas nakakakain ay yung mga long neck giraffes. So ang nangyayari dito habang yung mga short neck giraffe na mamatay sa sa gutom, sa hunger, or they could be killed and injured because of the um, intensive competition with each other, what happens now is that the population or the number of the short neck uh, giraffe gets lower and lower. Luminit yung number nila. To the point that yung sa mga long neck naman, since marami silang food o walang away, Okay lang, marami tayong pagkain. So, reproduce ng reproduce ng reproduce. What happens now is that the gene for long neck now becomes dominant. Dumadami siya in their population. And that of the genes of the short neck, since kakaunti na lang representations nila, luminiit na siya. Nagre-reseed yung amount ng genes. So, what happens in here is that along the way, no, along the generation or through time, luminate ang genes or ng expression dahil wala ng carrier, luminate ang um, gene pool for the short neck giraffe, dumadami ang that of the long neck na mamask ngayon yung expression ng mga short neck. To the point that right now, we don't see short neck giraffes anymore, but we see long neck giraffes. It's not because the law of uh, stretch, stretch, stretch. Sige nga, sabihin sa'yo ng partner mo, stretch ka, tara ba natin, natin hilahin natin yung katawan mo para pumaba ka pa so that we could have long or tall children in the future. This does not happen. It's not, it does not happen a single lifetime, lifespan, and it does not happen on individual organisms. What we're talking here is a population. So, another example, no? Um, since buff yung tatay, nagpalaki ng muscle, kasi gusto ko ang baby ko maskulado or strong. Yung nanay din, ganun, nagpalaki ng muscle and so that. You don't expect that since daddy is buff, the mommy is buff, paglabas ng baby mo, buff din siya o yung talaga maskulado siya. This does not happen. It's a misconception. You have to remember that when we're talking about an evolution, it's entire population. And the changes that occur happens on several generations. Not just one generation or not just two generations. Sometimes it needs to have, or the effect of evolution needs to have prolonged generations of time. No? But there are also times that very short lang, for example, four generations, you can already see the effect of evolution or mutation that happened. Pero yung bukas or sa susunod sa anak mo, ito na siya. No, that does not happen. There's, again, an effect of your environment also. Okay? So, this is a Evolutionary change is based on the changes in the genetic makeup of the population. Population, not individual organisms. So, you have here the entry of your first generation na present yung ating homozygous natin na dominant, you have the heterozygous alleles, you have the homozygous recessive alleles, no? and then magre-reproduce ka, giving you now this one. No? Andito na naman siya. And then magkakaroon na naman ng introduction of 
other ano, population ng genes niya because of the non-random selection and then magkakaroon ka na naman ng variations on the next generation and on the next generation. As you can see in here, no? Dito sa una, dalawa lang yung ating source ng ating white color or leon for the fur. And then after nung second generation, nakita nyo that the expression no, ng ating uh, recessive alis umunti na lang siya. And then on the third generation, totally nawala na yung white phenotype. Pero yung allele ng recessive allele A natin, nandyan pa rin siya. The gene is still there, but the expression is not anymore seen. This is the same with our talk dun sa giraffe. No? Pwede kasi you have the long neck giraffe, you have the medium sized giraffe, and you have the short neck giraffe. Because umuunti ng populasyon nila, na mamask ngayon ng expression yung mga short neck na na yung mga dominant long neck ngayon mask the expression of this recessive gene na short neck. Kaya pagdating mo sa third generation, fourth generation, you cannot see anymore short neck na phenotype. Yung talagang physically, nakikita mo maikli na yung leg nila. But you can only see na medium size to long size neck. But the gene for that size is still there. But the expression of it now gets masked na ng mga dominant allele. This is what we're talking about in evolution. So you see, no, when you talk about evolution, na katulad na sinabi ko last time, we jump from biochem, we jump to genetics, we jump to anatomy, we jump to morphology, to physiology. This is welcome to evolution. It's really a melting pot of several subdisciplines of biology. Now, Let's look at misconception number five. I will combine the discussion on misconception number five and number six. According to misconception number five, evolution only occurs slowly and gradually. No, evolution could also happen rapidly. Now, isama ko yung discussion nito dito sa misconception number six. That because evolution is slow, humans cannot influence it. Siyempre nga naman, the lifespan of human is just 70 years. So, how can we humans affect evolution? Kasi nga, ang bagal-bagal ng evolution, it will take you thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, or millions of years. So, dito pa lang, no? tignan natin itong mga misconception ito. According me, no? humans often actually are causes of major changes in the environment. That's a fact, and that is true. We are the, and ba, we, we violate or we are the instigators of changes in the environment. Sino bang may cause? Who caused climate change? Who caused the intensive amount of chemicals on the soil? Intensive amount of chemicals on the air? Tayo yan. We instigate that. And because of, again, no changes in the environment, this will cause changes in the immediate surrounding of your organism. Nag-iiba din yung mga abiotic factors na pinaggagalawan ng mga organism natin. Hence, it could cause or instigate evolution on your organisms. So, ano yung mga pwede natin explore? Number one, again, no, several species have evolved in response to climate change. Number two, First population or fish populations have evolved in response to our fishing practices. I would be expounding this, no, itong fish populations na yan, so that we could, no, provide evidence that the statement that evolution happens slowly and gradually and that humans cannot influence influence it could be questioned, no. Dito yung magiging patunay na hindi totoo tong dalawang statement na to. Of course, we also have on insects like bed bugs, crop pests that are now becoming resistant to most pesticides and insecticides. Ito yung another proof in here, no, which was, I think, I don't know kung early this year or last year yon, na on social media sites and even on news, no, uh, current affairs on television, there was a headline on the massive amount of black bugs. I think Nueva Ecija ba siya or Carla? 
somewhere here in region 3 and that it's not good for the health of the people yung sa news yung sapo sapo na yung black bugs na nag-infect doon sa area you can see in here that no matter how no matter how much they fumigate they put insecticides and pesticides still marami pa rin yung number ng black bugs it now shows you that organisms now starts to get resistance Ma'am, bakit ba? Paano po ba nangyayari yan? You can also observe this on your ano, no, mosquitoes and even on your flies. Na kahit anong bygone mo, na parang wala nang effect yung bygone. Parang, bakit parang mas effective na yung nabibili ko dyan sa happy go pamatay ng, ng insekto na to kaysa sa bygone. Why? Because no, kahit, for, for example, for the 100 organism na inesprayan mo, no? Pwede na merong mag-survive na sampo dyan. And that, itong sampo na ito, no, this 10 uh, uh, surviving organisms, na sa katawan nila yung chemicals, they could, no, abrupt, they, they, they could get um, characteristics to resist the effect of this insecticide. And therefore, that could be um, transferred yung modification na yun could transfer to their um, filials, to sa mga susunod nilang anak sa susunod ng generation. At kapag ganun ng ganun ang nangyayari, you expose them on the same chemical, di ba, nag-modify na sila, may na-survive, nag-modify. So, pag nilsprayan mo, medyo may hilo lang sila, yung iba namamatay pa rin. And then the next generation, and the next generation, to the point na kahit inesprayan mo na sila, parang... Mm, Pe, buti nga, sabi na lang sa'yo ng insect. Hindi ako mamamatay dyan. Mga ganyan, no? You can see that on, on, ano, no? On, ano ba to? Uh, sa mga, ano na, sa mga commercial, no? May mga yun. <laughs> That's just by God. So, kaya may mga ibang ngayon na ang release nila on advertisement is that it's a better formulated, um, kakaiba na ang formulation because they, dun pa lang, no, bakit nagkaroon ng ibang formulation? It's because they already addressed the fact that this uh, insects already obtain resistances on certain chemicals. You can also be seen this, or this is also, no, prominent in the bacteria. No, nagkakaroon ng bacterial resistance, nagkakaroon ng, um, antimicrobial resistance or antibiotic resistance ang mga bacteria natin, ang mga viruses natin. And this is why right now, no, dati pwede kang mag-over the counter ng mga, uh, ano to, mga cotrimoxazole, metron, uh, mga, mga kung ano nung metronidazole, mga may mga several antibiotics no over the counter lang yan pabili ng lima ganyan pabili lang ako ng lima tapos humans kasi or tayo kasi natural sa atin na kapag uminom tayo ng after 3 days wala ka nang nararamdaman ah, okay na ako titigil ko na tong um medicine na to i'm good i don't feel anything but in fact when you take antibiotics i think the uh, minimum amount of days that you have to take the medicine regardless as to whether there is symptoms or walang symptoms siya, is seven days. That is why now in the pharmacy you cannot easily obtain antibiotics without no um without notice or yung mga reseta ng mga doctor or that if you buy this antibiotics you have to buy the minimum of 10 pieces. And you have to drink that. Hindi na sila magbibigay sa'yo. Ng Why? Because there is now resistances. Nagkaroon na, nag-evolve an organism in resistance on this uh, microorganism. Sige, tingnan natin itong sinasabi ko sa fish population. No? In terms of the fish population, alam natin, or you can observe that populations have evolved in response to the fishing practices of the people. This fishing practices is, for example, in the foreign land or yung sa ibang bansa we're in, no? Ang nangyayari here is that ang um, fishing practice nila sa foreign is, di ba, um, ibabalik nila yung mga nahuhuli ng maliliit na isda at ang huhulihin lang nila is yung malalaki or talagang big fishes dapat. 
That's the practice. Why? Because the aim of the law that was enacted is to protect the small fishes and to let them daw live longer. Baka lumaki pa siya kesa kunin mo sila ng maaga. Baka wala na daw matira in the future na magiging fishes natin. But this was, no? This was, itong, itong sinasabing the fish populations, no? evolve now because of our fishing practices was uh, hypothesized by Dr. David Conover. So, sa kanya, according to Conover, no, uh, his idea is that it, um, work niya kasi, it demonstrates that fish can now evolve remarkably rapid. No? And that he is be causing this major evolutionary changes in the fish species. That is, yun, lalo na na nung mga fish that are economically important to us because we feed on them. So, ano ito sinasabi ni Mr. David Conn? So, here, no, sabi niya, is that um, what they observe, according to Conover, is that there are reports from fishermen and there are scientific studies that suggest that many wild fish were smaller on the average now than in the past. And that this small fish reach maturity at that small size. So, ito na yung na-observe natin. And you know that this is not um, at all different here in the Philippines. Yung bycatch system natin, if you ask fishermen, yung bycatch nila ngayon, they will say that maliliit na ang isda ngayon. Neng, dati malalaki yan. You can also observe this on the... I think ang pinaka I think nakita kong change is on lapu-lapu yung grouper fishes natin yung ating mga galunggong no I remember when I was in grade 3 yung galunggong na nabibili are the sizes of milk fishes malalaki siya right now the galunggong that you can see are already small no ang liliit na niya to the point that they are already fitted with the pan natin so, dito pa lang, no, when you go to the market, makikita nyo na that the fishes get smaller and smaller. Okay. So, I even if you go to the market, the wet market right now, fishes, our crabs, our shrimps, they get smaller. They are not anymore those large na nakita natin in the past. So, according to Conover, Dr. Conover, sabi niya, Fish now were evolving smaller body sizes because humans harvest the biggest fish. Now, this will cause artificial selection. Why? Bakit, bakit tayo na gan? Or It's part or it's an example of an artificial selection. Kasi yung natural selection natin, it's natural. It happens in the environment na hindi naman instigated ng, ng sino man, no? But there are now causes of evolution because of artificial decisions or artificial selections, like what um, humans do on their harvest. So, tignan natin ito sinasabi niya. According to Dr. Conover, no? In a population of fish in your ocean, no? there are variations of body size. Of course, merong maliit dyan, mature na siya at small size, merong medium size, and med meron tayong large sizes. So here, you can see here a very healthy uh, va and varied, no, genetically varied population. However, because of our practices, yung practices natin to collect the fishes, no? In here, what we do collect and which is also approved by law is that for you to catch only, no, you have to catch only the bigger fishes. You have to leave the smaller fishes there in the ecosystem. So here, huli ka lang ng huli ng large fishes, but technically, what you are removing in the population are already the genes for large fish. Remember nyo, no, kanina doon sa discussion natin sa giraffe, no? Itong mga smaller fish na to, they have genes for small size. Si medium size, may genes din yan for medium size. At si large size, may mga genes yan for their large size body. If you remove them on the population, you are technically removing the large sized gene. Ang tinatanggal mo na dito is yung gene for large sizes. 
So kapag tinatanggal mo na tinatanggal yan, nawawala siya sa gene pool. Mas dumadami ngayon ang gene ng mga small sizes. So, what happens now is that according ni, kung remove ka lang ng remove ng large size, you're removing the gene for large size na iiwan on the population or on the ecosystem are small sizes in here. Technically, if you will be observing later on, this is your small size, medium size ito, this is your small size, and this is your large size. Since ang una mga ang kinakuha, ang mga large sizes, susunod dyan ang mga medium sizes, what you can observe that almost now, no, in a population na dapat varied ang sizes mo, one-fourth na lang dyan, or 25% na lang, ang gene for large size. And 50% of the gene now are for the smaller sizes. The and then the population will reproduce. What will now happen is that there are more small-bodied parents now than that of the large-bodied parents. Therefore, mga maniniit or cute size na minimum na nasa minis na yung size ng ating mga offspring. So, this is the problem. Now, if th this is why fishermen have bycatch of small-sized fishes now. Nawawala na yung mga large size. Why? Because you remove the large-sized gene when you remove the large fishes. This is his hypothesis. Ito yung sinasabi ni Dr. Conover. Now, for to be proven, no, ang ginawa ni Dr. Conover is... Um, ito ang sinasabi niya kasi ang hypothesis niya is this downward trend in body size will continue so long as the largest fish are harvested. You are now removing genetic variation in the population. So, tingnan natin ang nangyari. Sabi niya, I will prove this. He proved this together or he tested his uh, hypothesis in the laboratory together with um, Stefan Munch. So, on this experiment na ginawa ni David Conover with uh, Stefan Munch, ang ginawa nila is that they set up enough aquaria. Actually, these aquaria are tanks. No? They have six large tanks that could house 6,000 silver sites. For, and the experiment commences for four years. Yung silver sites, the silver side fishes, they do look like our anchovies or yung diles natin, but this, I think, is a counterpart ng ating mga tropical anchovies. But I tried to look if they are on the same order or they, they, they do belong on the same class. Pero um, according to my limited research, silver sides and our anchovies, yung diles natin, even terong, are of different family. Parang hindi sila magkakapareho. They just look the same. They just have the same body shape, pero they're not of the same uh, species. Parang ganun. So, ang ginawa nila, 6,000 silver signs. Ang malilit lang din naman kasi ang silver signs. Hindi naman siya to the point na parang ganun sa bakungus lumalaki. Parang terong lang din yung size nila. So, they are able to manage it within the laboratory. So, what they did is for four years, they observed it. Four years for four generations. Because uh, silver sides do spawn and reproduce every year. Actually, every twice a year pa nga sila nag spawn So, what uh, Dr. Conover and Munch did in their setup is that they have three setups that is in duplicate form. So, sa setup one, tank A, the uh, here... Of course, lahat ito, there are all tanks have fish of the same size. So, para hindi malito, lahat ito pare-pareho lang ang naman. So, para meron tayong um, later on comparison, sabi niya. So, ang ginawa nila, their process is that on tank A, tank B, and tank C. Sa tank A, the process is um, the biggest fish will be removed per generation. Masa yung pinakamalaki sa, sa fish na to, i-remove -re natin sa tank B varied, sa tank C yung mga pinakamalilit ang i-remove. -re what do we mean? So, the setup was done in duplicate. Before spawning, 
when you say spawning, before there could be fertilization to occur. No? Kasi ang silver signs, para silang mga ano, uh, ano nga ba ulit yung fish na yon I forgot the, the name of that fish. Pero, before spawning, ano sila kasi, eh? hindi sila uh, within fertilization. Um, what they do is that the female silver, silver signs will release the egg cell no? on the water and the female silver, silver side fishes will also release the sperm on the water. So, nagkakaroon sila ng outside fertilization. So, before that happens, ang ginagawa nila, Dr. Conover, is that for tank A, they will remove 900 biggest fishes. Remove nila, set aside. On tank B, varied. Whether it's small, medium, or large, basta 900 tatanggalin nila. And on tank C, they will remove the smallest of all fishes in here. 900 then. For, then, ang matitira doon sa 900 mo ngayon, yun na lang ngayon ang magkakaroon ng spawning. They will spawn, they will mate, they will reproduce, and then magkakaroon ng baby fishes, and then yung mga baby fishes na yun, nandun lang siya. After a year, and before spawning again, for second year, get na naman nila 900 big fish for the tank A, 900 varied sizes tank B, 900 smallest sa tank C. This happens for four generations or for four years. Basta ang tatandaan sa tank A, 900, 900, 900. Ang kaibahan lang, large fishes dito, which imitates our fishing practices, varied na ang pagkuha mo ng sizes and yung smallest fishes naman dun sa taxi. What the group observe is that this, no? Tiningnan nila ngayon yung mean weight o yung laki nung harvested fish. Not only on the size, ang tiningnan na lang nila is yung bigat. What they have observed, no? Itong green na to, no? this green one here, is yung tank A. This is tank A, yung green one. Here. Tank A yan. Okay. Yung red natin dito is the tank B. Si tank B natin, yung varied ang kinukuhang sizes every before spawning. At yung blue natin is yung tank C. Yo? Yan yung tank C natin. So what you can observe in here is that for only four generations, apat na taon lang, very rapid, there's already no, a uh, dito, change in the population of the fishes. Yung sa tank A natin, na palaging biggest fish, you can see that at the start, ito yung kanilang bigat. And you can see a drastic downward trend for the four generations to the point that they become now the uh, end point of the fourth generation is that the silver sides now are already very small and that they achieve the maturity they spawn already kahit sobrang liit na nila compared with that of varied ang kinukuha mo no as you can see they they remain between 3 to 4 they hindi naman siya nawawala within 3 to 4 so varied ang kinuha niya kasi hodang malaki o maliit basta 900 kinuha niya you can see that there is a home parang nandun lang siya banayad lang yung kanyang increase or decrease hindi siya totally lumalaki and then on tank C na puro maliliit lang or the smallest fishes ang kinukuha. What you can observe here is that there is an increase, no? Drastic increase in the size of the fish. Mas lumalaki pa siya at the end of four generations. So compared now, no? Puro malalaki lang kukunin mo. The end mo dyan, the gene pool now will only contain small size gene. Therefore, the size of your fishes gets smaller and smaller and smaller as time or generations come by. Here, you can already prove that no, evolution could happen rapidly and humans could instigate evolution of your organism. So here, Ito siya, no? Ito yung dati. If we keep on getting and getting and getting this, you will end up having this already after four generations. 
So, the result of David's experiment showed not only that the body size of fish can evolve in response to harvest, but also that it can evolve rapidly. So, no, having a, so what can we do with this? How can we at least no, control the changes that happens in our organisms? So, you can do this, sabi niya by rather than protecting small size fishes you have to protect genetic variation that is you have to set up marine protected areas or marine preserves wherein there's no fishing so that you can allow the different size fish to continue procreating giving you now variations or giving you still uh, preserving na, preserving still the large sized gene within area, this area. Another one is to have a new catch criteria that rather than harvesting only large fishes and remaining the small size fishes or rather than putting that as a law, it could rather be na magandang medium sized fishes na lang ang ipahuli mo because the presence of the large size and the small size could no could probably in the future still give you a more varied and a well preserved genetically varied fish variations so pwedeng ganyan ang gagawin daw no in in real, in response to this i do suggest to everyone na sana this coming May 9 of course i will respect whatever is your idea or whoever you will vote i do not here <laughs> i will respect you pero sana you choose someone who really knows how to listen to scientists how to listen to researchers hindi yung mga candidates na bugsula ng emotion bugsula ng nandami what they think no this is the correct one okay. that they do not base their their even the reactions to a solid no solid tangible facts made by the results of researches. So, siguro mag-isip kayo mabuti. Yun lang, bahala kayo kung sino pipili. Now, misconception number seven. No? This is the second to the last misconception. According to this, sabi niya, humans are not currently evolving. So, hindi na daw tayo nagbabago. And a lot will say, oh, we are not changing anymore because we still have the same features, we still have the same color, we still have the same race. Walang nagbabago. But then again, this is a misconception. Although, no, although it seems like we reach already the pinnacle of, of our um, genes, there are a lot of variations that happens, no? But in, because of our technology, you know, the, the, the development of medicines, the development of several equipments to prolong our life, the, um, dito, the um, genetically modified organisms that na we na are doing now, na enhance pa natin yung mga characteristics that we want to enhance on our in vitro fertilized babies, diba? Like, yung mga artists, no? they, they, they like blue eyes daw, so they try to synthetically modify their children. May mga artists na tayo ganyan, yung mga in vitro. No? And it happens still also in the abroad. So, technically, with that, we are already changing or we are already instigating mutations on the genetic or molecular level. So, technically, humans could evolve with that. We also have what you call pag natural naman siya, no? natural phenomena that we call genetic hitchhiking or what you call as a selective sweep. Now, there are moments, di ba sabi ko nga sa inyo, some of our adaptive mechanism or adaptation gets embedded in our gene. And this embedment of the uh, gene of the air is pwede yung mutation na yun is a beneficial one. Say for example here, no, the beneficial mutation X, as you can see here, that gets now a hitch type o sumasama siya with genes dominant alleles no, na P dominant P gene, dominant Q gene, and dominant R gene. 
Now, upon reproduction ito, probably may isang organism or dalawang organism that could have mutated. And these organisms could be reproductively active. They could meet with others, causing na for a multiplication or na tawag dito na ta-transcribe na ta-translate itong x new x gene na to but then again no nagkakaroon pa rin tayong na genetic hitchhiking they still tong chromosome x natin they still are linked with the gene versions of p q r the dominant ones however no there are processes that we call recombination and this is not Nangyayari naman talaga siya, especially on meiosis part, no? Itong recombination nito will introduce this beneficial mutation X to the other version of our PQR gene. And this is yung sa ating recessive annulus na PQR. They now get also hitchhike via reproduction and recombination to, no makita mo, PQR pa rin siya. But the X gene now are not anymore exclusive lang sa dominant ones, but they get now entangled also with recombination of the dominant and the recessive allele. Later on, as time goes by, this beneficial X chromosome will now be associated also even with a homozygous o yung lahat ay recessive allele of PQR. Pwede na siya. And because of this, no, itong mga ito, again, a small or slight change in the molecular level will cause mutation and will cause successively evolution of the human race. Kaya nga meron pa tayo ngayon na parang mas matalino daw ngayon ng mga bata, mas fast processing, mga ganyan. Pero emotionally damaged sila kadalasan. Charis, baka magalit po kayo sa akin. Pero hindi, no? um, compared to before and after, you can up for debate. Wala namang problema sa akin yan. Pero hindi ko siya ano, no. Meron akong nakikita on TikTok that I'm not sure kung anong pangalan niya. Pero ano siya, he compared the emotional quotient, the practices of 80s kids, 90s kids, ano, mga bata, and the millennial o yung mga Gen Z na mga children. And you can see there, no? Sa akin, ha? Spot on na spot on yung changes. Yung mga 80s, they are very conservative. They are, they follow parents. They they are, alam mo yun, yung, yung ugali nila is quite different with Gen Z's. Right now, kasi lagi na lang nasabihin ng ibang Gen Z. I'm not making, I'm not saying na lahat, ha? Huwag niyo akong atakihin. But some of the Gen Z's are almost, no? Pero mga, Hindi ko na pa percentage, pero most that I have observed, it's not good for my mental health. I'm so tired. I have a lot of things to do with my class. What am I going to do? I don't like it anymore. Ganyan. It seems like ang hirap-hirap, pero during our times, wala kami ganun, no? Yung mga say, ay, iba kasi kayo, iba kami, iba kami. You have that, no? Siguro probably, nagkaroon ng mutation sa gene nyo, no? <laughs> to the point that nahihirapan na kayo sa adapt yung adaptive capability nyo is not anymore on that strong adaptation. No? <laughs> nagkakaroon na kayo ng mababang. Anyway, anyway, what I want to, de to, to just deal with it is that ma-observe mo rin per generations of your, or, or after 10 years, there is no difference on the habit the personality of human race. Kasi human to eh. Pwede nyo siyang, it's feel free to contradict. Hindi mo, mas better pa rin kami. But, if i-open nyo yung eyes at hindi nyo siya titignan na parang panalait sa nyo, you can see the difference talaga ng ugali ng mga lolo at lola nyo noon compared sa ngayon. There's a very high change. No? Another one on this um, is on the study of Henley Harpending and his colleagues. Here, he applied the technique on uh, to the genomes of the people. So, tiningnan nila yung genomes ng mga tao, which trace, so trace their ancestry to different geographic regions like in Europe, Africa, China, and Japan. And they have found a lot of favorable mutations. Um, during the, sabi nila, uh, there were identified 10,000 selection events or mutation that happened on our DNA 
uh, for the past 80,000 years. So, siguro kung 80,000 years to, around 1800s or 1900s, no? Um, pwedeng, in the past pa, so, so, so pwedeng during World War One, ang tagal-tagal pa, no? Thousands of years. 80,000 A, sabi niya. So, millennium, one millennium, millennium century, millennia, millennia. <laughs> Oh, before, no? You can compare what happened uh, during the time of yung mga nasa before Christ pa natin, no? Yung mga BCA natin, and then I compare mo siya right now, you can see that there is now, sabi nila, a lot of changes. 10,000 selection events happen. Why? Because during this time, no, 80,000 years ago, probably, or 100,000 years ago, People now became, ano, um, travelers. They they wander around, no. Uh, example nga natin yung mga nangyari um, on kolo, ano ba, colonialism, nung ginawa tayong colony, the introduction of transport, the the people now gets to move around. So you can see now that uh, nagkakaroon na ngayon ng multiracial families that dati parang black sa black lang, white sa white lang now. Uh, no, that's not anymore the case. The um, ideologies of people gets liberal to the point that they do not anymore demarcate by the color of the skin or by nationality or by race. Now, because of that, no, um, it opened now gates for a lot of probable genetic variations or selection events. It was not 10,000 selection events na to accordingly yung mas marami pang nangyaring mutation uh, 10,000 years ago. So, kung 10,000 years ago yan, during the time talaga na nagkaroon na ng mobility yung mga tao and that they, 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 they transcend the idea of race, the, the idea of color, mas nagkaroon na tayo ngayon ng um, changing in the um, genetic makeup of humans. Which really is, no, makikita mo naman na pwedeng talagang affected tayo dyan, no? Nagkakaroon na tayo ng multiracial families. Right now, you can see a lot of, ano no, foreign, no? Sabi nga na, mas bet na ngayon ng mga, <laughs> mga sinakta ng kalooban ng mga afam o mga foreign na, kasi mas liberal nga ang kanilang thinking o mas understanding daw. So, because of this, no, this assortative mating, so, nagkakaroon nga tayo ng evolution. The non-random selection also causes us to have mutation of our genes and therefore evolution also of the organisms. Another example na pwede natin tingnan in here that will um, contradict that we are not evolving is that of the Tepetans, yung ating mga Nepalese sharp, Sherpas compared to lowlanders like us. So, you know for a fact that Mount Everest is the highest no, mountain above sea level on our planet. It stands with astounding 23,000 feet. No? And of course, no, a lot of um, climbers have already tried to climb here, especially or specifically yung sa, sa, sa Filipinos. Like for example, we have there Dale Abenohar, Leo Orasyon, Erwin Imata, Romy Garduse. We also have females, we have first Filipino, uh, female Filipino who climbed um, and reached the summit of Mount Everest and then sina Janet Bellarmino and the gang. No, I think sinang lahat naka Cat or nakasam, and they're considered the first Filipino women. Um, actually, may issue pa to eh, between Leo Abenohar and Leo Orasyon. Si Leo Orasyon kasi yung, I think in the history, was considered as the first Filipino to summit Everest. Pero this is being contested by Dale Abenohar. According to him, na-reach daw niyang summit ahead of time with Leo Orasyon. The difference is that iba kasi yung track or iba yung daan nilang dalawa. If I'm not mistaken, north versus south ata ito, na yung, yung kanilang track pa sa lubong na sinasabi, Dale Abenohar contest na nauna siya with Dan may uh, uh, orasyon. But then again, wala kasi siyang patunay other than the ato, other than the statement of his um, Sherpa. And then wala rin atang record na nag-start siya. So parang dal iba nga yung kanyang leg, no? Nung, nung dinaanan. So, 
technically, ang binibigyan ng idea dito is lay or rasyon. Okay, anyways, aside from the issue, ang dami kong chismis sa kanina. No? Nabasa ko lang siya habang tinitingnan ko itong mga pictures nila. So, however, regardless of who they are, all of these climbers or those who want to summit Everest will have to have several trainings before they could um, allow or before they are allowed to to summit Everest. Why? Because they need to adapt to the thinning oxygen environment in Mount Everest. Because the higher you are from the ground or from the sea level, the more that the oxygen gets depleted, luminate ang amount. Yeah. Thereby, those um, climbers of the Everest are required to, I, I think my, there are six mountains that they need to summit for multiples of time. Meron silang level 1 three, mountain, level 2, level 3, ganyan. But they have to summit this six, no? Dapat meron din atang evidence that they did summit this six um, mountains so that no, parang ang nangyari doon is that they, they are training their body in ready for their summit sa Everest. Bakit? Why do they have to do that or why do they need to comply with that? That is because of this, what we called as the VO2 max test. I'm sorry for that. No, that is volume of oxygen maximum test. This is the test for the maximum capacity of the body to transport and use oxygen. Kasi nga, when you summit Mount Everest, hindi ka pa nakakaabot doon, meron sila already tinatawag na dead zone. Dead zone because the amount of oxygen is so low that you have to have no oxygen tanks already. Kailangan meron kang supplementary oxygen na. So here, no, um, what they do is that yung anin na climbs nila before Everest and multiple climbs at ang kailangan, it increases the lungs capacity to take in as much oxygen as possible um, on, 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 as much as possible when they are um, hiking. At the same time, um, yung, yung um, six leg o yung six na akyat nila natin um, causes them to produce more red blood cells per volume. Mas marami compared sa normal na katulad natin. You know for a fact that uh, your deoxygenated blood, no, they move to your, uh, our lungs for oxygenation. And then, that will be now transported or pumped by the heart towards our body. The problem in there is that kung low land ka, dito ka lang sa almost sea level sa uh, area, okay lang yan. But if you go above the Mount Everest, nagkakaroon tayo ng problema because the body is not well adapted for it. So, kailangan, no? There is a need now na dapat uh, ma-increase natin yung oxygen or, or, or kaya ng katawan mong isupply yung need ng oxygen mo. If you go down for this training, yung VO2 max test or yung training for that, ang nangyayari dito, when lowlanders visit areas of high altitude, their bodies begin to produce more red blood cells. And these extra cells now seem to help transport available oxygen around the body. And this may eventually compensate for the decrease in the oxygen levels kapag nandun ka sa dead zone, allowing breathing and heart rate to return to normal. The fact or the reason why they need first, no, hindi agad-agad Mount Everest, kailangan nilang i-hike muna yung six mountains na yun for several times, is to train their body. Even yung mga sports natin, no, yung mga, uh, ang tawag dito, mga uh, athletes natin, they get training sila ng training. Bakit sila langoy ng langoy, swimming ng swimming? Because they want to make sure that their body could adapt to that stress. What is they, what they do is that they try to stretch their capability more than the normal non-athlete person. Kailangan mas mas stretch pa nila yung capability nila. You call this as your phenotypic plasticity. This climbers that climbs muna, nagtitrain muna umakit ng maraming iba't ibang ibang mundo, they try to stretch 
their phenotypic capacity. No, ang nangyayari dito, before they climbed the Mount Everest, nagkaroon na ng stretching, <laughs> stretching. Na, nagkaroon na ng adjustments yung kanilang physical attributes. That is, the amount of ox, uh, the amount of red blood cells in their body now gets increased compared to the, um, the normal volume or amount sa mga hindi na, na sa mga hindi aket ng um, Mount Everest yung mga lowlanders na katulad lang nating normal. So if you will be comparing the volume of their red blood cells itong mga katulad nila orasyon na umaakit dito or sa atin, mas mapapansin mo during their training ang taas ng volume ratio ng kanilang red blood cells. Bakit? This is a phenotypic plasticity effect. This is a physical adaptation nila to the decreasing amount of oxygen while they are ascending the summit of the mountain. Nagiging adaptive mechanism nila sila. Adaption lang siya. Adaptation lang siya. Unlike your Tibets or yung mga Nepalese, your Tibetan Highlanders, no, they have no trouble living at 13,000 feet, halos kalahati ng Mount Everest. And many of them, many of these Nepalese Sherpas or yung mga guide nitong mga climbers na to, do not use supplementary medicine when they are, ah, supplementary medicine, supplementary oxygen when they are ascending or going to the summit. Unlike sa mga lowlanders na katulad natin na oh, maano pa tayo ng oxygen tank. Kung mapapansin nyo doon sa video ni Leo Orasyon, no, yung Sherpas niya, hindi nga ha, lagi naka-oxygen mask. Unlike kay Orasyon na tinatanggal niya pag nagpipicture siya, ibabalik niya gano'n. You can observe them na smiling pa sila. Even, oh, look at the clothing nila compared sa mga lowlanders. Ang, ang kakapal talaga. Look at them. They could carry this. Ang bigat-bigat na, tatawirin nila yung eyes na yun, pero wala silang, you don't see them huffing and puffing and hirap na hirap humingi. Nakasmile pa sila when they're doing this. Because, no, hindi na lang adaptation sa kanila. Ano kaya, um, kamag-anak kaya sila ni Elsa? <laughs> the cold never bothered me anyway ba ang dating nila? <laughs> Meron ba sila ba ay descendants ni Elsa na <laughs> ng Frozen? Or, magkukasyon ka, how do they do it if they do, if it's not the same as the loaders? So, the basis actually in here is that Tibetans have evolved. No? Their adaptation caused them to change and to evolve into having a part on their DNA stretch known as your EPAS1. This EPAS1 gene now codes for a regulatory protein. This regulatory protein no, actually senses the level of oxygen sa kanilang immediate environment. And it will help now control the process of producing red blood cells for your Tibetans or yung mga Nepalese. This um, EPAS1 is not seen, this EPAS1 gene is not seen on lowlanders like us. EPAS1 uh, gene was seen on the genetic makeup of the Tibetans, purebred Tibetans that was studied by several scientists. Um, accordingly kasi, ang story ng mga Tibetans is that these Tibetans are part, no? they, they, they live in China, but because of something to do with panahon ni Mulan ito, eh, yung mga Hans, no? yung mga sa Mongolia and Manchuria, yung uh, panahon ng there is a war uh, between hands and yung mga sa Mongolia and that of the um, China, nagkaroon ngayon na these Tibetans were parang napaalis sila on their uh, territory and they were forced to evacuate near the, the foot of the uh, Mount Everest. So, nung mga unang time, of course, a lot of the population no, gets maraming mataas ang mortality rate nila. But because of those surviving no, individuals, ang sabi kasi in here, mas na, eh, ano sila nung sa mga pregnant women, that during their conception, nagkaroon yung, yung adaptive capability ng mga women. No? Kasi nga, pag buntis ka, mas kailangan mo ng mas maraming dugo because you have to also supply oxygen to the ano, baby. So, ang nangyari dito is that, nag yung mga unang, syempre, yung mga unang 
buntis ng mga Tibets, marami sa kanila ang namatay. But those surviving women na nakapanganak, no, they have transported or they have gifted, gifted talaga, they have given this Epas 1 protein to their filials, which now begins to be um, slowly per generation, lumabas na ngayon yung Epas 1 for everyone. Parang ito yung best gene na nakuha nila. Now, the Epas 1, sabi nga natin, this is code for a regulatory protein na nakaka-detect ng amount of oxygen and adjust the amount of blood sa, sa katawan ng mga Tibets. Now, bakit meron? Ano yung anong ibig mo pong sabihin, ma? No? As you can see in here, we have here, yung C natin is the um, allele ng mga hands. Yung G is for the Tibetans. So, we have on the population na doon na tinest nung, nung subjects na yun, they have seen na um, 10 of the Tibetan individuals living there on the 13,000 feet no, above sea level. Sampu dito are homozygous han ang kanilang allele. Meron silang 84 doon na heterozygous ang allele. And meron silang 272 na talagang purebred allele ay Tibetan. Now, what they have observed is tinignan nila yung uh, mean hemoglobin concentration nitong tatlong to. And what they have observed is that, no? Kapansin-pansin dito that ang may pinakamababang hemoglobin concentration are yung mga Tibets talaga. Yung mga purebred Tibets na merong EPAS1 gene. No? Ko, and if you can also compare the mean red blood cell count, mas mababa pa yung red blood cell count ng mga nasa Tibet compared dito sa mga Ahan and other lowlanders. Ngayon sabi mo sa, baka tanoy niyo ako, mama sabi mo kanina doon sa phenotypic plasticity, kailangan mas marami silang i-produce na red blood cell para makompensate ng oxygen nila. Eh bakit itong mga Tibets na to, mas uunti yung concentration ng dugo nila, ng red blood cell at ng hemoglobin nila. What, bago nyo ako awahin, no? what yung kanina pinapresent ko kay Naleo Orasyon is phenotypic plasticity. Ito kasi sa kanila is more on adaptation, mutation, and evolution ang nangyari. It was seen kasi, or, or parang based on the parang ito, uh, trial and error ng pagkabuhay nila, the more that, that Tibets produce red blood cell, the higher is their chance na magkaroon sila ng pagkahilo when they ascend above sea level. So, habang dumadami pala ang red blood cells sa kanila, o tumatas ang volume ratio ng kanilang red blood cells, mas hindi safe for them. Kasi, yung katawan nila nasanay na on this amount of concentration para, uh, parang sanay na yung katawan nila for that. Now, sa so, iisipin mo, paano po pala yun, ma'am, na nangyayari that they are able to survive this? Edi dapat pala mas mababa ang red blood cells natin. Okay. This research team also tried to look for the reason as to why ganito siya. What they have observed is that although no the concentration of red blood cells of the bets and the hemoglobin amount of the bets are lower compared sa mga lowlanders at yung may mga phenotypic plasticity the, the ability naman of their red blood cells to um affiliate oxygen and grab oxygen is better compared to those of the lowlanders kumbaga yung diffusion rate pag dumaan yung excuse me, pag dumaan yung red blood cells nila sa lungs part, automatically mas mabilis yung transfer ng oxygen sa blood nila and mas maraming na uh, nagkakaroon ng mas mataas na affinity yung mga oxygen molecules sa blood nila and mas capable yan to transport sa kanilang katawan unlike doon sa mga lowlanders. Again, this um, characteristic is a product of evolution that happened to your Sa kanila kasi, no, the change in the EPAS-1 now seems to make Tibetans less likely to overproduce red blood cells at extreme altitudes and hence probably helps them to avoid altitude sickness and deliver oxygen more effectively to developing 
fetuses, lalong-lalo na sa mga babae. So, itong EPAS-1 na to, um, yung regulatory protein na to, sabi niya, it controls, so it detects the amount of oxygen. Kapag mababa, of course, for prolonged periods of time, mababa ang oxygen yan. Itong regulatory protein na to, will in, uh, ensure na maglalabas siya ng red blood cells. Pero kung enough ang oxygen, i-regulate lang niya sa dating concentration yung amount niya. Why? Kapag tumataas nga kasi tayo sa altitude, mas nagiging mahiluhin or nagkakaroon tayo ng dizziness. So, to counter that by a trial and error on the process of these Tibetans, eto ngayon yung uh, kagandahan ng presence ng EPAS-1. Kaya nga, if you can see most of the Tibetans, they could hike Mount Everest, they could walk thousands, no? sobrang taas, mas mataas pa sa Mount Tapulaw natin or Mount Pulag natin, carrying heavy materials, walang-wala lang sa kanila yan. Sanay sila. Another unique traits of Tibetans is that they have a higher breathing rate and their blood vessels expand more compared uh, sa atin. Mas expand yung uh, blood vessels na kumpara sa atin, which allows them to have a better oxygen uptake and which contributes to their ability no, uh, sa kanilang uh, high-level living. Parang ganyan, no? So, which is different to Dito pa lang, no? this happens how many years ago sa China. And you can already see that they are humans, but they have different um, characteristics sa atin. Even in Africa, pwede nyo na rin tong makita yung the presence of the sickle cell anemia, yung, yung nagkakaroon tayo ng sickle cell sa, sa South Africa. It's also, no, um, naging adaptation yung sickle cell na yan because of the malarial impact sa, sa civilization nila. Yes, no, sa, pag sa ibang tao yan or normal sa atin, ang um, sickle cell anemia is not good. Pero sa, sa African population na yon, having a sickle cell anemia prevents them from dying to malaria. Naging ano siya, naging adaptation siya, nagkaroon ng evolution on that portion of population. Meron tayong mga ganito. So, humans still evolve even up to now, depending ngayon yan sa environmental conditions. But it will take several generations, several trial and error before we can have that beneficial. No? And last misconception for, for this discussion is now, species are distinct, or species, ito na naman ako din, species are distinct natural entities with a clear definition that can easily be recognized by anyone. So, whether it's a plural or a singular species, yan, hindi yan, species, plural, species, singular, species pa rin siya, no? And, no, it was defined on your ecological hierarchy of organization that a species is any group of individuals that are actually or potentially interbred, interbreed in nature. Uh, actually, if you talk, no, kapag pinag-uusapan natin to, I already give you that population is a group of individuals or species is a group of individuals that produces a viable offspring. Hindi na lang siya basta interbreeding. Why? Why is this itong distinct natural entity na to is a misconception? Because, no, in in when we talk about on the domains of life or some some other kingdoms, no, we have organisms that do not interbreed. Some organisms that do not do sexual interactions, no. They have a sexual way of reproduction like your uh, bacteria your bacteria, your monerans, or your archaea bacteria, no, your pro, um, pro, sorry, yung ating mga prokaryotes, they do not, no, reproduce via sexual reproduction. They reproduce asexually, like in budding, in fragmentation, in binary fission. So, ibig mo ba sabihin, itong mga bacteria na to, they are not distinct entity? Hindi sila species? Kasi, hindi sila nag interbreed yet they produce viable offspring. Kaya wala kang makita, the bacterial species, no? hindi masyadong madalas ginagamit ang word na bacterial species. But what they use is bacterial um, strain. Another example in here na 
medyo hindi applicable talaga ang species. Or, there is a, I think, ano nga ba pangalan nito? Blue something salamander. No? This salamander, so, they are the single ladies of life, di ba? Sabi ni Beyonce. Single ladies because the salamanders don't need uh, in, to interbreed with actually walang male salamander sa populasyon na to eh. They don't need male for them to reproduce organisms. Sila ay sila yung talagang totoong strong independent woman kasi kahit wala lalaki nakakapag-reproduce sila ng maraming anak. Yun nga lang, lahat din itong anak niya are all female. Lahat sila single ladies and they could produce viable offspring without interbreeding. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ito species, hindi ito specific population. So, doon nagkakaroon tayo ng misconception in here. You, are, you should be very careful in here. No? Pag kasi, sa, sa ecology kasi, we try as much to put distinct entities sa mga groups para nga hindi man ito. However, for you to tell that a species is a group of uh, individual that interbreeds to produce offspring is wrong. So, pwede mo siguro sabihin, these are group of organisms that are capable of producing viable offspring. Then, that definition of species could be encompassing because even those organisms that do asexual reproduction are already included on the definition. So, careful tayo. Sa atin here, at evolution topic, no, dito sa evolutionary biology, when we talk about species, we don't talk about whether it's sexual or asexual reproduction, but they produce viable offspring. So, pag sinabi mong species, correction natin ha, mga ma'am, these are organisms that are capable of producing viable offspring. Okay? Now, having the, the, the definition kasi na yung previous natin that they are able to interpret is difficult to apply on some of our species. Hindi kasi discrete. Um, yung kasi pagkakaroon natin, species, community, population, we try as might na parang i-discrete packets natin yung grouping ng organism when in fact, hindi naman kasi siya as discrete as this. Okay? Now, next. So, um, that, those are some of the several misconceptions in evolution, in evolutionary biology that I think needs to be talked upon. No? Kahit walo lang siya, ang laki, ang dami na natin yung pinag-usapan. So, for now, to end this um, discussion on our uh, chapter, uh, I want you to make a reflection. No? Sabi kasi, I want to know, no, based on what we have discussed, based on the information that I gave with you, no? you, you can um, agree or disagree with this statement. So, that's what I want to know. Do you agree or do you disagree with this? No? It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. Yeah. I want to ask you, do you agree with this statement of Charles Darwin or do you, do you disagree? And I want you to support your answer with evidences. In terms of supporting, kung nag-agree ka dito, bigyan mo ako ng specific, no, specific um, example. When you say specific example, pwede nyo na panood, pwede nyo ilagay dito yung link, pwede news siya, pwede um, documentary siya, and you can put the link in here para mapanood ko as part of evidence na ay hindi totoo yan or totoo yung sinasabi ni uh, Charles Darwin. So, whether you agree or you disagree, please put an, a specific evidence na nagsosupport sa stand mo when it comes to this statement of Charles Darwin. So, ayun po. Maraming salamat for your time. I hope I have shared enough information. Sana meron po kayong natutunan at meron po kayong naintindihan sa shenare ko ngayon. So, I hope everything clears up and I hope to see you soon again for our next discussion on the next topic. So, thank you everyone. Have a great day. Bye!